Good morning guys, how are we all doing? Welcome to the weekend everybody, happy Saturday, hope you guys are all well. I am Dan from Trading with Dan, this is our Bitcoin morning update. So if you guys wouldn't mind smashing that like button, we shall go straight over to those Bitcoin 4 hour charts. So, so yeah, Bitcoin on the 4 hour. So this spike low when we did yesterday morning's video, uh, sort of a front running of this uh, of this uh, old uh, support level to, uh, sorry, old resistance level to new support. Um, you can see it did manage to buy bounce price action quite nicely. Uh, we are into basically the, the next more major level of resistance, uh, in my opinion. I know a lot of people think this $45,000 level is was the major level and I guess I guess it probably uh, with price action so far uh, that is where we broke out from and then came back and back tested but um, I don't know just in my opinion I think this area above 47,000 uh, is where we are looking very good for upside and actually um, actually down here I think because it does open up obviously downside but yeah above 47,000 is obviously where uh, we're above this level and it opens up this whole trading uh, trading range here between obviously 47 and uh, $52,000 uh, and yeah if we chop sideways in here for a bit that would uh, be pretty normal I think uh, we could probably end up extending this trend line higher uh, maybe we come and test it maybe we do wick below uh, 46 at some point test it where test it around well what would this be <laughs> in a mid in, in in early to mid april uh, but yeah, we shall have to see. But generally speaking, this reaction is good. We just need to make progress back above 47,000 and hold. Otherwise, we could be looking at basically a lower high relative to this uh, lower high, this high, sorry. Uh, and then uh, potentially look to take out this low and have like a medium term downtrend. Obviously, we've had this uptrend. Uh, this longer term downtrend trying to reverse it and then have like a bit of a pullback potentially into the forty one forty two thousand dollar level um that that would certainly be on the cards obviously it's a weekend now so it's difficult uh, to uh make any a solid decisions based on price action uh, of crypto and also we don't have traditional markets open um but we'll also go and have a look at ethereum satoshi pairing so right up to right up to uh, the underside of our of our major resistance level here it's nice to see the bull flag pretty much playing out still got a little bit more a little bit more to go but obviously into that resistance area the descending trend line breakout uh break above this resistance the back test uh the consolidate under this uh resistance and then break onwards and upwards all all textbook all very textbook and if we look at the wider uh the longer time frame uh picture uh, if we get above here uh then realistically uh new uh highs uh in this in this trend are on the, on the cards uh so we could we could easily see up to up to the north spot north nine levels uh and that would be uh, a decent move a decent move for uh, ethereum against bitcoin will actually just uh just work out what it what it will be just to get up to 0.09 yeah 20 percent 20 percent move not looking bad uh, the actual ethereum usd pairing as well is flirting uh with its resistance uh, rejected initially back uh, down and now back above it this similar level to bitcoin is not quite clear uh, of uh, and this is obviously reflected in the fact that ethereum is stronger at the moment relative to bitcoin so ethereum has got above this level so ethereum looking looking good here uh looking good and then yeah the target obviously for ethereum um based on based on uh yeah well just confirming above 3500 is is pretty much up to here i think in my in my humble opinion uh which would be uh depending on where we're here a good uh, a good uh, 50 plus uh, percent uh yeah a good 50 plus uh, percent extra uh dollars dollars for your ethereums um so yeah that's looking potentially good here let's look at some more macro things stock markets whilst people uh are like panicking saying oh stock market is dumping with decoupling coupling blah 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 uh, all that's really happening stock market didn't really maintain above here uh, obviously it was uh, the start of the new quarter people are probably uh putting their downside protection that unwound into the end of the end of the last quarter uh, a bit of downwards pressure on price action as long as we hold above here it is fine uh, it's very fine if we hold above here. I mean, even above here is not too bad. But yeah, if we hold here and then move onwards and upwards, it, it, 
it looks fine there is nothing really to worry about in this chart uh, also um also a lot of people out there going on about how the rallies are always the most uh, ferocious rallies are in uh, in bear markets uh, that actually statistically isn't even the case uh, like the eye test when you're involved on one it may seem that way uh, but actually the biggest rallies are actually in bull markets on the whole uh, there is a there is a there is a video that I'll just post uh, of some of the best analysis of stock markets uh, that will uh, that basically confirms that I'll post that video in my chat um, but yeah uh, it's a good channel to follow for some real uh, in-depth in the weeds uh, analysis of uh, of, uh, of all aspects of stock markets and and it is bullish it is bullish at the moment they're they saying things are bullish this price action we've had uh, is not really indicative of bear market price action uh, so yeah that is obviously somewhat a contrarian uh, uh, view because obviously everyone I mean basically the market's full of bears when the markets are down and bearish uh, and there's all uh, there's all fear and uncertainty and doubt going around obviously the crowd likes to uh, run around like headless chickens with a bearish bias and then similarly when markets are all-time high everything's looking fantastic and great and there's no uh, there's no fear and certainty and doubt in the market all the participants run around like uh, bullish headless chickens uh, so yeah there we go uh, oil uh, below a uh, hundred dollars just for a nice little close uh, for the for the uh, for the week uh, you can see the the triangle I mean I, I keep adjusting this maybe everybody from here and then line it up if I'm line I am lining up the bottom of here and then incidentally it just lines up there perfectly uh, so yeah maybe we uh we have been drawing this triangle on on the fly uh, so it has be having been having to adjust it so yeah break below here then this resistance comes into play break below this resistance we're looking uh, we're looking basically down to down towards $85 uh, and then that would be I think personally in my opinion be massively bullish for stock markets uh, it would uh, scare a lot of the uh, the 50 uh, uh, basis point every every Fed meeting uh, fear mongers in the market uh, because that will clearly would be an easing easing of inflation. Uh, wheat as well back below ten dollars could potentially break down as well. So um, yeah, we could see like I've, like I've said, we could see a couple of months uh, of uh, of benign market conditions of basically uh, of makers make hay whilst the sun shines. Uh, uh, a nice, a nice rally, and then uh, that's not to say we'll collapse after that, but we'll just have to reassess up after that. Maybe we'll get a nice move, and then maybe things will get wild, and we'll get like a J hook, uh, like a crazy crack up boom type scenario. You cannot rule anything out. <laughs> you cannot rule anything out. All I will say is that this rally, like I said before, is one of the most hated rallies that I've seen uh, in stock markets. Every single person wants to fade it, thinks it's wrong. Uh, they just, everybody's kicking off. But they're obviously underlying, underlying, underlying dynamics uh, that central banks are just going to support and prop up everything. There is even a battle going on with the uh, yield curve in Japan. And this is important because basically Japan pinning its yield curve underlines un, under under basically puts a puts a bid on all global uh, bond markets they are literally uh, doing QE propping up the uh, propping up basically all the world's bond markets uh, and just buying unlimited uh, JJBs and what I also will say is the release valve as we spoke before with yield curve control is the currency and the currency the Japanese yen has had a a seven standard deviation move a seven standard deviation move uh, away from obviously uh, from its previous uh, trading levels so that is breaking down based on the fact that uh, there is a lot of a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, firepower having to be put in the yield curve control and it's uh, uh, if that breaks, it's not it like it's not necessarily likely to break. But if that did, uh, if basically they lost control of that yield curve, then that is it. That is that is literally it. We will have the a, the infamous uncontrolled sell-off in the bond market. Um, but what we need uh, is basically, in my opinion, is oil to break down uh, back through this level, back through the 90s into an 80 handle, and then the everything will calm down. Inflation concerns will calm down bond market rally will calm down and Japan will be fine and then I, I honestly think we'll have a, a very a very uh, bullish uh, bullish uh, market for risk assets uh, that is uh, that is my uh, that is my base case <laughs> my base case at the moment uh, so what else we look at yeah ruble obviously recovering nicely great that is good to see uh, just because of uh, just general general market conditions it's uh, it's 
obviously the ruble the ruble coming down uh, basically is gonna increases the uh, potential uh, insolvency of uh, of a lot of uh, basically Russian corporations and financial institutions that that the finance 1.0 uh, European and American bank finance financial institutions hold. Uh, so if they were going to consider default on their debt because they couldn't afford to pay it back at such a low uh, level of the ruble against the dollar, that had massive implications. So this is good. I mean, ignore your geopolitics, whatever uh, prejudices you have against anybody. This is just good for risk assets. That is that. That is the underlying thing. That's all we care about here. We only, only care about risk assets and out of the risk assets, we only care about the riskiest of the riskiest risky assets, which is uh, clearly crypto at the moment. Um so yeah <laughs> what else do i want to look at uh i think that is about it 10 year easing off easing off a little bit here uh like i said if oil is gonna if oil is gonna break down and certainly not move higher this looks very toppy and this will come down uh so yeah just something to bear in mind there uh especially based on the fact that the whole market is bullish on bonds uh sorry bullish on the bond yield bearish on bonds uh, so yeah, let's have a look at stochastics. Four hour uh, did turn up and moved up, and actually uh, did uh, precipitate that nice move. Didn't get much of a bullish uh, bullish reset. Did a bit a bullish yeah bullish reset. Didn't get much of a bullish reset. I know without even looking at these, uh, these didn't come down very far. Uh, and before potentially looking to try and turn back up, you can see uh, losing their curvature. They are still obviously pointing down, so we do have downward pressure. Um, and if we do actually look at the chart, you can kind of see we can still very easily uh, trade sideways, uh, trade in potentially form pennant. I mean, let's just draw speculative pennant on just for just for just for fun. And then we'll just see how because we could trade sideways within this uh, within this sort of formation uh, before ultimately they make a decision, at which point we then would probably get a nice a nice a reset of this 10 12 round daily down a little bit more, turn back up and then breakers on to the upside so just some pure just some fun there just some fun for the weekend we'll draw that in but yeah daily uh pointing down as well but two day uh freshly basically uh freshly upward impetus did kind of lose its upward uh, momentum but now continuing with that three day looking great and then the five day looking this is looking fantastic I, I struggle to believe uh, we don't continue onwards and upwards in the medium term based on this read and also this read and especially if this gets above 50% and then bi-weekly is looking to turn up as well so and from a low level so like I said couple of couple of months potentially uh, of absolute uh, absolute <laughs> all you can eat uh, or you can eat at the Fiat Buffet, uh, potentially on the card. So yeah, that is it, guys. Remember, this is clearly not a financial advice. I am clearly not a financial advisor. I hope you guys all have had a great week and have a great weekend. And I shall speak to you guys soon.